Good evening, welcome to Good Math Number 173. Math one Number 173. So uh, we were going to do the last chapter of our Art and Problem Solving Algebra book, which is on sequences and series, which is really awesome. But I saw something on Twitter today uh, that a Cornell professor published, Stephen Strogatz, and uh, I thought it'd be fun just to spend a week or two talking about the logistic equation, or the logistic map, it's sometimes called, just because it's a really neat connection between algebra and geometry. So here's the equation, which looks a little bit intimidating. Yeah. Yeah? <laughs> yeah. But you know a little bit about this, believe it or not. Okay? So what this is saying is we're gonna start we're gonna start with some some number. Let's pick a number a half. Alright. And let's just say r equals two for some reason. Okay. So our equation becomes x sub n plus one equals two times x sub n times one minus x sub n. Okay, and so let's put in x sub n equals a half. Alright. Start at x0 equals a half. This says x1 equals 2 times... Times... This is, this is the... This is the... x0. Yeah. So what's x0 equal to? X... It's a half. So 2 times a half times... Times 1 minus a half. 1 minus a half, which is... Which is minus a half. One minus oh, wait, a half well, is uh, a half. <laughs> that's a half. Okay. Then so what is two times a half times a half equal? It's a half. Yeah. Okay. So this says x1 equals a half. So what's x2 going to be? But we put now x1 equals a half into here for x1 now. And that's going to give us what x2 is. Now, I didn't pick the greatest example in the world because x2 is going to be what? x2 is going to be... So if this is, that's a half. This is a half. Yeah. So x2 is going to be 2 times x1 times 1 minus x1, which is 2 times... 2 times a half. Times 1 minus a half, which is... Which is a half. So half. it's still going to be, it's still going to be a half. Yeah, it's still going to be a half. So it didn't change from what we were doing before. Right? Yeah. So let's, let's take a better example. I bet Stephen Storgatz does because he prepares for these things, unlike me who just sat down and started talking. Let's pick a third. x0 equals a third. Okay. So x1 is going to equal 2 times a third times 1 minus a third, which is 2 thirds. 2 thirds. And that's going to equal? That's going to equal 4 ninths. 4 ninths. Okay. And we put this in. Now we can use x1 to create x2. x2 is going to be 2 times x1 times 1 minus x1, or 2 times 4 ninths. 4 ninths. And then, one, and then times, five, times 5 ninths. 5 ninths. And what so is this equal to? That's going to be 40 over 81. 40 over 81. Okay. These are, these are getting closer and closer to a half. Yeah, it looks like they are. Hey, very good observation. Okay. So, the interesting connection, and we'll talk about more about this over the course of this week, and I'll stick with this equation, 2 times x times 1 minus x. Okay. If I wanted to graph an equation like this, y equals 2 times x times 1 minus x. First of all, what type of equation is this? It's a linear equation. Are you sure about that? No, wait, it's a it's a quadratic with the two terms. It's a quadratic. So what does this equal as a quadratic when you multiply it out? It's two x squared. Well, it's we could say it's two x minus two x squared. Two x minus two x squared. And what are the roots of this quadratic equation? What makes well, what x values make this quadratic equation equal to zero? Zero. Zero. X equals zero. The y value is zero. And what's the other y value x value that makes this well, zero? You could you pull an x out and you get x times 2 minus 2x. Okay. So 2x, x is 1. x is 1. So just like we had here. So I'll put that here. So I have the two roots here. And does this quadratic open up or does it open down? It opens down. Okay. So I get a parabola that goes down like that. Okay. And when I put in uh, values of this equation, like when I put in a third, I go up. Do you remember what we got out of third? We got four ninths. Four ninths, very good. And that became our new x value. So then we, got, we went a little further over. So we could go over to four ninths and go up to here. And what did we get? 
Forty-eighty-firsts. Forty-eighty firsts, and then we move, we move over here. We go up and we go Seems up. like it is converging to something. Seems like it is converging to something. So we can look at it geometrically. So what I'm going to show you tomorrow is an amazingly cool way to look at this geometry. Hmm. And what some people started thinking about and understanding these equations. And then later on in the week, I'm going to show you some amazing things that come out of these equations. So, so far, it looks pretty simple, right? Yeah. Yeah, but guess what? Mm -mm. It's gonna get a little complicated, but super cool. And then hopefully we'll do some programming, maybe on Khan Academy or something. We'll do some programming to play around with this too. All right? Interesting. All right, good job today, sweetie. Good job.